Have you ever felt like you can't do anything because you want to do everything? Well, that's what happened to me for the past three months. I disappeared from the face of the earth. Well, not really the face of the earth, but I disappeared from YouTube, from social media in general for quite a while. And that usually doesn't happen. Usually when I take a social media break, it would be one or two weeks. But this time I felt really lost. So I went hiding. And as someone who teaches people how to build their personal brand online, hiding from social media isn't exactly the message you want to send people. <laughs> and I felt really, really guilty the entire time that I was gone. But it was necessary and it took me these whole three months to figure out what was going on in my head and finally i can explain to you in actual words what i was feeling and why i was hiding for three months i was stuck i was stuck with my niche i was paralyzed from creating content because I felt lost. I didn't know what I want to do. I didn't know how to fit all the passions that I have into a niche for my personal brand. This isn't a new problem. I've always had this problem. I've always had too many passions in my life. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know that. In high school, I loved English and languages but I also went into the science track studying physics and biology and at the same time I was doing art minor, I was in the boy scout, I was in the volleyball team, then in college obviously I was in architecture school but while everyone was so focused on architecture alone and dedicated their entire college years to it, I was also working part-time as a graphic designer I was studying design, I was taking theater classes as my minor, so I have a minor in theater, not that I can act, but I was mainly doing directing and like storyboard writing. Even when I started working as an architect, I couldn't pick a side of either should I be a technical architect, should I be more like a designer, should I be a manager. I just wanted to be an architect that can do everything <laughs> and I've always always wanted to do everything not to mention I've always had multiple side hustles with my full-time job and people always ask me how do you do so much don't you get tired of doing so many things and the answer is no I actually feel much more energized when I have multiple projects going on at the same time in my life because they're everything that I love to do. But this multi-passionate side of me have always caused me a lot of anxiety for two reasons. Number one, I wasn't sure how I was going to find that purpose that everyone is always talking about if I don't just focus and just do one thing. And the other reason is a little more personal. I was afraid that there was something wrong with me, that maybe I'm afraid of success because somehow finding that one thing means you're much more likely to be successful in this society. And I was worried that I'm too scattered, I'm not focused enough, maybe I'm not determined to finish something. If you can relate to this or if you've ever felt this way because you're a multi-passionate creative person, ask yourself this question and I wish I asked myself this question a long time ago. Why does it feel so wrong to love so many things? Why is it wrong for us to have multiple passions? The truth is, it's the culture, it's the culture that we're brought up in. Somehow there is this magical destiny that we're all supposed to go to and there's this one big purpose that we're all supposed to find in our life. 
Like in college, we had to pick a major and focus on it for years. In architecture, you have to do it for at least five years. But honestly, when you're 18 years old, what do you know about yourself to really find this one major that's supposed to be the focus of your entire life? And if you're a specialist, nowadays you are getting paid probably much more than a generalist. If you ever dare to make a career switch in your lifetime, like I did, you will face a lot of judgment of not being focused or dedicated. Especially when you're a content creator on YouTube or Instagram, this gets amplified a hundred percent. Everyone online tells you about niching down. Every business guru, every marketer, every career coach. Even your family <laughs> would probably say the same thing. You gotta find your niche. You gotta find that one passion, that one destiny, that makes you who you are. That's where you are gonna end up for your entire life. There is even a book called The One Thing that tells you exactly how to do this. But have you ever wondered, what if your brain just doesn't work this way? What if you want to pursue multiple passions? More importantly, what if the act of doing multiple things at the same time actually make you genuinely happy? There's no road map for people like you or people like me, so you might feel like you don't belong here. You might feel like you don't have a purpose in life, so you don't deserve to be happy, and you might start asking if there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You are more than one thing. You can be more than one thing. The problem with niching down is there are so many dimensions to a person, especially for creatives. Most of us have a lot of different passions. For me, as an example, I have a license in architecture. So should I talk about architecture? I'm now a marketer. So should I talk about marketing? And I have a passion for tea, as you know from my Instagram. Can I talk about that on my channel? And I also love DIYs and I love organizing things. Should I do a vlog for like I don't know a room makeover? I was also traveling for three months, and can I add a travel vlog to my channel? These are all the questions that I was asking myself. For the past three months, and I felt so lost, and at the same time so ashamed that I like so many things and want to do so many things. It almost felt like I don't belong to this YouTube world because everyone on here is supposed to niche down and find this little box that you fit into. But I started thinking to myself. What if I stop listening to these marketers and influencers on social media? What if I stop the source of my mystery, which is all these people telling me to niche down on social media, and just live my life that I would normally do without any influence, without anyone telling me I need to just focus on one thing? So. I did that for three months, and I worked on many, many things that I loved over the past three months without social media, without influencers influencing my brain. I signed up for weekly tea lessons on how to do traditional Japanese tea ceremony, like really official ones that I do every week, and it feels so good. I can't tell you. How good it feels to my soul to be doing these tea lessons. I also wrapped up an entire course funnel for a blog that I owned for a few years, and it's really just for like a passive income stream. Then I designed a new brand for a tea website, which is my other side hustle. That when I'm done, I can show you in another video. I also organized the entire house, but now it looks messy again. The fact that I finally gave myself permission to do all the things that I love to do without the shame, without feeling guilty, I felt so much happier and so fulfilled in my life. 
it almost felt like I was nourishing my soul. You know how good you feel when you are taking a hot bath with like really good smelling bath bomb and drinking a glass of wine. <laughs> That's how I felt by doing all the things that I love to do. It was so nourishing to my body and my soul. And because of all of that, I feel like I'm finally ready to come back and create content again. But this time, I'll be my own niche. When you are building a company brand, you do need a niche. I mean, you're not gonna be a coffee shop that's selling computer, or you're not gonna be a pizza shop that's selling donuts. Although that actually sounds really good. Can someone make pizza donuts? I would try that. When it comes to your personal brand, don't let other people tell you to niche down because your personal brand is your life. If you try to fit your brand into the small little box that everyone tells you to do, it can directly influence your life like it did to me it affects what you do every day because when you're creating content you're basically documenting your life as a personal brand and it can make you really really unhappy now if you're wired to be a specialist if you're great at doing just one thing by all means niche as much as you want you'll get paid so much more than i probably ever will but if you are a multi-passionate person like me, please don't feel ashamed of doing all the things that you want to do. Don't get me wrong, if you are trying to build a company, you do need to niche down. Another thing is, if you want a lot of followers on Instagram, a lot of subscribers on YouTube, you do need to niche down because that's just how the algorithm works. If your content is all over the place, you most likely won't grow that fast. But if you're trying to build your personal brand that's sustainable, that will last years and years of your life, like when you're 80. I wonder if I'll still do this when I'm 80 years old. If you want a personal brand that fits into your lifestyle, that you actually feel excited about, that you actually want to do, and you wake up in the morning and you're excited to go film, just be your own niche. If you care about something, talk about it. If it matters to you, it would matter to someone else too. Because simply showing up is hard enough and having to fit yourself in this tiny little box they call a niche is even harder. And I also find that if you just focus on being yourself and just talk about the things that you care about, people will resonate with you. Yes, you might not get as many likes and thumbs up and subscribers or followers, but you'll get much more love. People that actually love you for who you are and they are here to stay with you for the long term because they genuinely have met you and they love the person that you are. So I think the question is really, do you want 100,000 likes for people that just like this one passion that you have, that's why they follow you? Or do you want a hundred people that love you for who you are and that will probably follow you until you're like 80 years old and they're also 80 years old <laughs> and you guys all just grow up together. And it's really up to you. For me, I would rather be myself. I would rather be my own niche and have less followers, less subscribers, less people that like me, but more people that genuinely love me and watch my content because they just love what I do. To all the multi-passionate creatives out there, if you take just one thing away from this video, I want you to remember to please embrace your love for doing it all, embrace your creativity, embrace your ideas. You can be your own niche. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell because you'll see more content from me in the future. Also, if there is any topic that you want me to dive deep into, leave me a comment and let me know and I'll create more content that you love. Just in case no one told you this today, you're enough. So go be your own niche. I haven't sat in front of a camera for three months, so it feels a little weird. <laughs>